Bombardment of the Dardanelles, no author named. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Bombardment of the Dardanelles First Allied Attack, Described by an Onlooker From The New York Times, March 8, 1915 Athens, Saturday, March 6 Dispatch to the London Daily Chronicle The bombardment of the Dardanelles forts, according to the latest news, proceeds with success and cautious thoroughness. It is now anticipated that before another two weeks are over, the Allied fleet will be in the Sea of Marmora, and Constantinople will quickly fall to the victorious Allies. Two features of the operations make extreme caution necessary for the attacking battleships. In the first place, the number of mines laid in the strait have been found to be enormous. They must all be picked up, and the work takes considerable time, seeing that it must be done thoroughly. In the second place, the larger batteries, against whom the Allied fleet is contending, are very skillfully hidden. I have had an interesting talk with a gentleman who has just arrived from Tenedos, where, from the height of Mount Ilios, he witnessed the bombardment. He tells me, quote, the sight was most magnificent. At first the fleet was ranged in a semicircle some miles out to sea from the entrance to the strait. It afforded an inspiring spectacle as the ships came along and took up position, and the picture became most awe-inspiring when the guns began to boom. The bombardment at first was slow shells from the various ships screaming through the air at the rate of about one every two minutes. Their practice was excellent, and with strong glasses I could see huge masses of earth and stonework thrown high up into the air. The din, even at a distance, was terrific, and when the larger ship, with the biggest guns in the world, joined in the martial chorus, the air was rent with ear-splitting noise. The Turkish batteries, however, were not being drawn, and, seeing this, the British Admiral sent one British ship and one French ship close inshore toward the Sed El Bar forts. It was a pretty sight to see the two battleships swing rapidly away toward the northern cape, spitting fire and smoke as they rode. They obscured the pure atmosphere with clouds of smoke from their funnels and guns. Yet through it all I could see they were getting home with the shots they fired. As they went in, they sped right under the guns of the shore batteries, which could no longer resist the temptation to see what they could do. Puffs of white smoke dotted the landscape on the far shore, and dull booms echoed over the placid water. Around the ships, fountains of water sprang up into the air. The enemy had been drawn, but his marksmanship was obviously very bad. I think I am right in saying that not a single shot directed against the ships came within a hundred yards of either. End of Bombardment of the Dardanelles No Author Named Read by Bologna Times.